How do you know? Because I know, you know, uh, there's this uh, stimulus.gov, you're yeah. supposed to follow yeah. it, and people got on it. The bottom line is that we do check it, but what happens is the initial report comes in cold. We don't, of the 130,000 reports that come in as to what they did with the money, we're now going through it. Are you satisfied with the level that, then you're saying you do have a good idea where this money has, you don't feel like it's disappeared in Absolutely either? not. Nobody messes with Joe. I'm reassured. Joe's on the case. You're listening to the Laura Ingram Show. We have a lot to get to as we track the uh, latest machinations on Capitol Hill. The compromise better not be a compromise on conservative principles. That's all I can say. It better just extend the current tax rates for all Americans. It makes sense. If I'm Mitch McConnell, I go for five years. Forget the two. I'll see you. I'll see you two, and I'll raise you three. That's what I would say. Forget the two. You got the momentum. You got the wind at your back. We need a five-year recovery. You know why I'd say five? Because you have people like Ben Bernanke out there saying, "Well, this is going to be a long road. This could be four or five years." Okay, then Ben Bernanke says it's four or five years for recovery. So extend the Bush tax cuts for five more years. Let's track what the administration is saying. If, if Bernanke's saying it's going this slowly, then we have, we have to have this situation remain. Otherwise, it's going to be a drag in our economy. Okay, perfect. Joining us now, I'm delighted he's with us, California Republican, incoming chairman of the House Government Oversight Committee, Congressman Daryl Issa, who, who apparently does not, you know, much to my chagrin, he doesn't have a list of who's been naughty and nice, but I think that's because the list of people who've been naughty out there is so long and it wouldn't look so great compared to the list of nice people, which is fairly short when it comes to Washington. Hey, Congressman, how are you? I'm doing fine, Laura, and, uh, you know, like most uh, people on the eve of Christmas, uh, uh, the administration's beginning to play nice and not naughty. So the fact is one of the reasons we're not giving out the list is we're hoping that they'll look at the hundreds of letters that we pointed out their mistakes slash failure slash wrongdoing, and they'll read them. And as they read them, my suspicion is they may quit doing some of the things they've been doing wrong. And like anybody else coming into a job where there's so much to do, what I'm really hoping is that they'll make my job smaller by knocking off some of the things that clearly they should not have done early on in this most ethical of all administrations of all time. No, you're going to have to be. You're going to have to be the lion on the Serengeti and just take them down. I mean, that's they're not. They're, I mean, they're, they're suddenly the the lion and the and the wildebeest aren't going to start getting along. I just, I, Laura, I, you're I, absolutely it's not right. Happen. Remember, a lion can only gorge on one that one prey a day, uh, and uh, you know, as the uh, as they laughed about, you know, the two the potential 280 hearings a year. Uh, I might get one subcommittee chairman able to to digest that much, but there is a limit. You know, when you look at uh, the continuation and the rebirth, what I call ACORN 2, organizations that have split off and are now trying to get money, actually, in the waning days of ACORN, money that went out that shouldn't have gone out, IG investigations, attorney general's investigations still ongoing. Here's something we began on day one of my being the ranking member, and we're still, absolutely still, hunting down this organization that distorted democracy, that in fact changed the outcome of elections for the benefit of one party over the other using your tax dollars, uh, these are long and big investigations. So if I can get the White House to quit using Gmail so that the American people don't have it recorded for, you know, consistent with the uh, Presidential Records Act, that's a nice one not to have to do. Uh, will I succeed? I don't know, but uh, when I met with Nobody Messes Around with Joe, uh, that was part of our discussion is, look, please, don't make me have to focus on this administration. I'd rather focus on a bureaucracy that is, to use an expression that you can't use on radio, something down a rat hole. Uh, you know, we have so much loose money here in Washington, including, you mentioned it, do they know where the money went on the stimulus? Well, they know what the checks were addressed to. Do we know what happened to the jobs that weren't created or saved? Absolutely, we don't. Well, let me let me go through the uh, just for the edification of our listeners, Congressman Issa. Six point four billion dollars in stimulus funds uh, was recorded as spent in over twenty eight thousand four hundred twenty jobs saved or created in four hundred and forty districts that don't exist. Uh, I mean, well, I'm, I'm, that, I'm one of them. <laughs> California has a couple of districts beyond fifty three and. Uh, 
It's more than just uh, that part. I've worked with Earl Devaney, who's a career IG, who's trying to really make his reporting and accountability very good. But the most he's doing is looking back and finding waste, fraud, mispayment uh, after the fact. Government has to get much more like the private sector, where we don't cut the check to 50,000 inmates who can't substantiate and shouldn't be getting tax returns uh on your back. The fact is, if you find out afterwards that $130 million went to 50,000 inmates who can't even show that they had the money, then it's pretty clear that we haven't gotten it yet, that it's not writing the check that's important, not just finding out that you wrote the wrong check. When uh, you had said some time ago that, look, the American people uh, expect us to use the existing gridlock to create compromise and advance, you know, their agenda. Uh, you, 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 you kind of went back and revised those comments, right? I mean, well, uh, Laura, I mean, people have a problem with the word compromise. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, the potential compromise, which is that the American people don't get a tax increase while they're going through one of the worst recessions, and they're already being very, very heavily taxed in addition to the overspending. If the compromise is uh, a, an ugly, bad, keep people on unemployment rather than help them get back to work, uh, I'm not sure it's a great compromise, but it probably is the compromise that's going to happen. Uh, most of the compromise is, look, in my case, I won't look endlessly at the past if this administration will stop doing wrong what it's been doing. I won't look at every penny that was wasted in the past if you'll promise not to do it in the future. I'll give you just one quick example. We spent a billion dollars in the middle of a war to build an embassy in Baghdad so we could have a, a prime shelling target. It was a mistake. It was way too much money for a palace, way premature of when it should be in a country we're still trying to get on its feet. Guess what? We're spending another billion in Pakistan uh, in almost the same matter, and you're going, well, is this because we plan on having it being a shelling target? There are so many opportunities to keep from wasting your dollars. Imagine a billion dollars for something in the middle of Islamabad so that, so that America can say we've got walls and big setbacks. The, the list of billion here, billion there, Laura, is amazing. The worst, though, are your seniors who are listening who say, what about my Medicare? You know, I do rely on it. Medicare wastes more than 10% of what it spends by giving payments for things that didn't happen. This is not a small problem. This is tens of billions of dollars every year that we just keep saying we're going to stop, but we're not stopping the waste. And we have found mm -hmm. that it can be stopped proactively. They just haven't instituted the, the 10 or $100 million of networks and people to save billions of dollars a month. No, well, they don't care. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, but they just don't care. If they cared about this stuff, if they truly cared about the future of this country, uh, they would be reminded every day that this money is coming from Red China. It's not coming from uh, the, you know, the sky. It's not coming from anyone except China right now. And China is being emboldened, strengthened across the board militarily and, of course, economically, and we're helping them. And as Lord, long as you're, we you're... keep going, going, going down this road, Congressman, and we can point fingers to Acorn or point fingers at, at the new Black Panther Party and ask the IG and this department to look into it and that department to look into it, but we, we don't cut this spending, as Tom Coburn said uh, an hour or so ago on the show. We don't get this fiscal house in order. We're not going to have any money to have any hearings. We're not going to have any money to do anything. We don't be existing anymore. You're absolutely right. And, you know, one of the biggest problems in Washington, I came out of uh, two decades in business, is they can't tell the difference between spending and investment. Everything is called an investment. Nothing is really recognized as just spending. And, uh, we, you know, we have $1.4 trillion that we could cut in spending without cutting any, quote, investment. And that's what the American people, if they're small business uh, people and so on, understand, that, uh, you know, there are things that you defer or don't do. Washington doesn't get it. The other thing that you're alluding to is my committee is not a committee of carrots. I don't, I'm not an appropriator. I'm not giving out money. My committee is the committee of the stick. And the carrot that I give to a bureaucracy is if they're doing as good a job and they're improving, I don't use the stick. And if they're not, then they don't get my carrot. They get the stick. And uh, we're going to be incredibly aggressive. Uh, we've 
looked at everything all the way back to Harry S. Truman and war profiteering, and what we find is government does a better job when Congress is relentless in going after waste and exposing bureaucrats who pretend that the money is a budget yeah. rather than it's your money. Not witch hunts, but f- ferreting out waste and, and true abuse. And, and in that vein, Congressman Issa, rating him in his seriousness to stopping waste, fraud, and abuse of all the stimulus money, from uh, in a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate Biden's seriousness? I have to be honest. Uh, he did not meet with the chairman of my committee or myself until after the election. So you have, you have two, almost two years of his having the job but not having the, 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 the common decency to say, well, how do I work with the people that can help us do this better? So uh, do I think that foreign affairs is the vice president's passion? Yes. Do I think that this issue is his passion or even his interest? Not particularly. I do believe he'll do a better job now that we're on the job. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but that's, that's kind of an understatement. Uh, you know, I, shortly after the election, I got a call, and, and the call was, Gerald, it's Joe. Uh, I did not get that call for the first two years. So things are changing, but they're only going to keep changing if we're relentless in the job we have to do. I've met with uh, so many of the senators who suddenly are born-again conservatives, Colburn being one that was already that way. Uh, but I'm suddenly finding Republicans who are acting like conservatives over in the Senate. That That is a mar- that is an amazing change that I hope to make sure continues from the House. Let me guess who. John Tester, uh, Jim Webb. Warner, Casey in Pennsylvania. Let's go down the whole list of the people who were silent during the health care debate. Now they see their political futures on the line and say, oh, well, we got to talk to ISA. we got to make sure we're serious about this stuff. I mean, it's so transparent and obvious what's happening. Uh, well, we're just glad that Postal Service is going to be delivering all the uh, Christmas cards this season, Congressman, since it's losing $8.5 billion a year of uh, Red China's money. Oh, you're absolutely right about the postal system being a classic example where they have a mandate to break even or make a profit. They ignore that because they have a compensation package that's more generous than any other federal workers and, are, and, are, and no willingness to do any real changes other than attrition. 100,000 yeah, be- <laughs> people retired, and they're acting like that's the savings. Those people retired at 70 or 80 percent of what pensions. they were making. Yeah, big fat pensions, and this is this house of cards is coming tumbling down. Congressman Daryl Issa, uh, the naughty and nis, uh, nice list. We we need more specifics, but I, I'm intuiting what you're going to do here, and I like it. Congressman Issa, thanks so much. Thank you, Laura. Have a merry Christmas. We're going to take a break. A lot more. Don't go away.